think uh, Professor Albert Ford does not need any introduction to this community uh, or any community in general. But nevertheless, as a matter of formality, I would like to say a few words about his career and his life. Professor Albert Ford graduated from Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris on his PhD at University of Paris in 1970 and became professor of physics at University of Paris Sud in 1976. He is today scientific director of a joint laboratory of CNRS and the company Thales. And he is an emeritus professor at University of Paris Saclay and member of the French Academy of Sciences. Everybody knows that he got the prize in 2007. <clears throat> I just borrowed a few lines from his biography from the Nobel Prize website. Uh, so here he mentioned the year, uh, he mentioned this in the year 2007 when he got the Nobel Prize. He said the year 2007 marked a high point, <clears throat> excuse me, in the activity of the uh, UMPC and RS Thales. It was rich in new results and publications. And for me, abundant in scientific prizes, the Japan prize in April in Tokyo, the Wolf prize in physics in May in Jerusalem and the Nobel prize in December in Stockholm. The Nobel prize of course has changed my life. I have received innumerable requests and new responsibilities are on the horizon. In addition, I'm eager to return to my research projects and to concretize my recent ideas, equal challenge. I also hope that the Nobel Prize will facilitate the entire team's energetic communication of its ideas and messages. And this is how actually, after 2007, he made many, many interesting physics. I'm just reading, Professor Vedang Mahanti already said the importance of the GMR, and I'm just uh, repeating a few things. So the experimental and theoretical research of Professor Ford is in condensed matter physics electronic and magnetic properties of solids. In general, it's called spintronics. He was one of the discoverer of the GN resistance in 1988, a phenomenon which is well known for its application to the hard disk and the resulting large increase of their storage capacity. This discovery has also triggered the development of the important research field, which is called spintronics. And sometimes defined as a new type of electronics harnessing the spin of the electrons. Professor Ford and his team have made significant contribution to the development of spintronics, in particular by works on the theory of spin transport, the valet hot model, and experiments on spin dependent ton tunneling, generation of microwaves by spin transport, spin hall effect, spin orbiters, spin transport, carbon based conductors. His most recent works on topological surface states, discovery of inverse Edelstein effect, and skirmions. He pioneered this field of skirmions by exploiting his 1980 prediction of chiral spin interactions at interfaces. Obviously, he has many awards, many honors. I just mentioned a few. The International Prize for New Materials of the American Physical Society, 1994. Magnetism Award of International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, 1994. The Grand Prix de Physique, Jean Ricard of the French Physical Society, 1994. Europhysics Prize of the European Physical Society, 1997. Gold medal for the French National Scientific Research Center, CNRS, in 2003. Then, obviously, the important later on came the Wolf Prize 2007, Japan Prize 2007, Gay Lujak Humboldt Research Award 2015. So, he has got the honorary doctorate from those of universities. So, it's our great, great, great pleasure to have you, Professor Furt, today on our event. There are about 500 people now attending this lecture. So, without taking any further time, I request you to start your lecture. Thank you so much. And I okay, just want to mention, you. during the lecture, we do not take any questions. You can write your question in the chat. And after the end of the talk, we will take a few questions. Thank you. All, it's all Thank yours. you a lot. So first, um, hello to everybody. I am very pleased to be with you today. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. So my screen is a is a photo and image of uh, my laboratory in France. So it's uh, a joint laboratory between, as has been said, between the National Center of Research and the company Thales inside the Université Paris-Saclay, an excellent university and also an excellent laboratory. I have a fantastic co-worker in this laboratory. So as you can see, the title of my talk is uh, 2D magnets from fundamental to spintonic device. 
2D magnet is a new field of research for me. I am a beginner in this field, but I prefer to speak to uh, in, on topics that I don't know very well because I learn a lot in preparing my talk. Yeah? And I prefer, I don't like very much to speak about things that I know too well. For example, my recent works on skirmions or um, topological surface states. So, Coming back to 2D magnets, bidimensional magnets. Uh, so as you can see, uh, I will say that uh, the kickoff was the advent of graphene. This, uh, this advent of graphene 15 years ago uh, started, um, um, uh, um, kicked off the development of an intense research of other 2D materials. And today, there is a very broad family of 2D materials. And uh, in fact, these 2D materials can be magnetic or non-magnetic, generally non-magnetic. They can be metallic, semiconductor, or insulator. And, even for only 2D magnets, that is um, compounds presenting a magnetic ordering, the list is always very long. You can see a, a table with all the compound, magnetic compounds that have been uh, found during the recent years. Uh, so uh, some of them are uh, ferromagnetic, other antiferromagnetic, or the other type of magnetic ordering. Which, and uh, uh, some are metallic, some other insulators or uh, semiconductors. A general property, of course, is, uh, and this is a bottleneck in this field, is at the moment the too low ordering temperature, a consequence of the marming wegener uh, theorem. And so generally all these compounds you can see here are a ordering temperature below room temperature, but it's not desperate. In fact, there are some results that show that this uh, temperature can be enhanced well above room temperature by proximity effect, for example, uh, and the record being 400 Kelvin at the moment. So uh, the situation is, uh, okay. For the moment, the, the bottleneck is this temperature. So I begin by a few words, general works on the physics of these uh, 2D magnets. Um, and uh, first, as for in a very thin layer, there is a strong influence of interface. Interface are more important than what is between. Huh? And, and so this leads to an influence of proximity effect. The property can be controlled by the proximity with another materials. This is a flexibility that is very interesting. And so because with a very small voltage, when the signal is small, you can uh, generate large electric field. You can also control the property significantly by electric field. And also the spin orbit effects are more important than in 3D materials. Why? Because large spin orbit uh, coupling is essential to escape from the merming wagner theorem. We say that for isomer spin, for isotropic spins, there is no possibility of ordering except at zero temperature. But uh, this is because there is some uh, um, divergence of the excitation of magnets. But you can escape from this theorem with uh, some um, large anisotropic field, large outer plane field, for example. And in fact, this um, anisotropy can be induced by spin orbit effects. So all this, because all these compounds escape from this theorem, they have most of them large spin orbit eff effects and you can exploit these spin orbit effects. And so there are many interesting properties related to the spin orbit coupling. For the applications, of course, uh, there are, uh, we will see that there are promising, provides that the low order in temperature bottleneck can be solved. And we we'll see, can, we we'll see some example of higher order in temperature than room temperature. Uh, what I can say also is, uh, because I am just a beginner in this field, and so I will begin by a general review of results from different laboratories. Uh, except in the last part of the talk, which I can uh, present some personal results for me and my co-worker in the field of skirmion and chiral interaction more generally. 
So at the beginning, it will be a review of results from other groups. So a good example of 2D magnets is what is called FGT. FGT is uh, chalcogenide here, yeah, uh, which is, uh, uh, can be prepared by MBE, the best uh, method, CVD or exfoliation, and is a very good ferromagnet. You can see, for example, of course, the magnetization generally in this compound can be detected by the anomalous hole effect. And you can see some cycle of magnetization from anomalous hole effect for one monolayer on the on the left, uh, two mono, 10 monolayers on, uh, here. So you can see the temperature of ordering is uh, for this one about 125 Kelvin. And um, for 10, uh, 10 uh, monolayers, it becomes something like 100 and, uh, above, 180 or 70. You can see from the analysis of this curve and from the usual, the classical hour plot, you can see the ordering temperature as a function of the number of layers. In fact, uh, uh, I, I don't want to explain the theory of this ordering. Okay, simply I have said that you can escape from the mermin wagner theorem by introducing some anisotropy and by introducing even more some coupling between different layers. And the, for example, you can explain how the order in temperature increase with the number of layers in this FGT system, for example. But I don't want to develop these uh, questions. Uh, bon. So this is a good example of ferromagnetic um, 2D system, 2D material. And another uh, classical material also is CR I3, chromium I3. Uh, so this is uh, so this is the structure again. I can show you again the structure of the, the first one. You can see the third one with uh, uh, the, where are the germ, germanium, tellurium, and iron. The spinomic coupling comes mainly from TE here. So now uh, going to uh, CER I3, you can see again the structure, and the magnetic moment is on the chromium. And uh, in fact, the, uh, the classical property that has been investigated by many, many groups is that for a single layer, the system is ferromagnetic with a very low order in temperature, of course, 45 uh, Kelvin. But for a bilayer, now the system becomes antiferromagnetic with antiferromagnetic ordering of the two layers. And of course, this uh, antiferromagnetic system can be switched to ferromagnetic ferromagnetism by applying a magnetic field, as uh, it occurs even in 3D uh, compounds, anti-ferromagnetic 3D compounds. And then again, for trilayer, it becomes again with a ferromagnetic response. Uh, so this is an example of uh, CRI3. And in fact, this is for CRI3, this is a good example of how the magnetic property can be manipulated by applying electric field. Very small electric field uh, corresponding to small voltage uh, uh, on gate voltage, for example, on the system. You can see for CRI3 how uh, by applying a voltage uh, electric field, a vertical electric field, one can go from uh, ferromagnetic uh, alignment to antiferromagnetic off in the opposite direction. So the magnetic property can be easily manipulated by an electric field. This is a property that is easier. Uh, it is its manipulation is easier in 2D materials than in 3D uh, magnetic materials. So uh, now I come back to the problem of the enhancement of the ordering temperature, for example, Curie temperature of ferromagnetic 2D magnets by electric field or proximity. So an electric field, because a small gate voltage can induce a very large electric field, is uh, can be used to manipulate the electronic property and the magnetic property. For example, by applying a, um, a gate voltage in this way, uh, by ionic gating, is possible as a function of the voltage you apply to start from this temperature to this temperature a little above room temperature in this way. So this is one of the way to manipulate the uh, Curie temperature of this FGT. 
And even better is uh, what has been found in the group of uh, Kang Wong at UCLA is that by depositing the FGT on uh, this topological insulator, BI2 TE3, uh, there is a strong enhancement of the Curie temperature of the system. So you can see, for example, the magnetization curve as a function of temperature. And for, for example, four layer of FGT deposited on the topological insulator, the Curie temperature uh, reaches 400 Kelvin. And if, uh, for example, you can see a diagram, you can see the uh, Curie temperature of the system deposited on the topological insulator as a function of the thickness of the layer, the number of layers. And you can see that uh, the maximum is at about 400 Kelvin, when for about uh, four, four um, layers of AGT on the topological insulator. Of course, the proximity with the topological insulator enhances the current temperature, and then as a function of um, the number of layers, the influence, the, prox the influence of the interface with the topological insulator decreases more and more, and to uh, and goes back to the um, to the temperature of the compound uh, without uh, topological insulator. So, in fact, this is a good example. The explanation, the, the calculation, for example, the DFET calculation does not explain very well why this proximity with this topological insulator and STC. The only result they say in the paper published by UCLA is that it seems that the proximity with uh, um, the topological insulator enhances the coupling between the different layers of FGT, and so enhances the, uh, by increasing this coupling, enhances the great temperature. But the exact mechanism, what occurs at the interface, what is exactly the microscopic mechanism of the enhancement is not very clear at the moment, and certainly will be solved in um, uh, further uh, calculations. So, so now we'll uh, focus on uh, several types of uh, interesting property. And I begin with uh, the TMR, the tunnel magnetoresistance, and the electroresistance, the generation of spin currents by spin orbit coupling, the spin orbit torques, and this sort of interesting properties. So I begin with uh, tunnel TMR, tunnel magnetoresistance, that is well known for 3D uh, magnetic materials. And this uh, magnetoresistance can be also found with 2D material. This is an example in this publication of a, a magnetic tunnel junctions uh, with uh, two electrodes of FGT separated by uh, a single layer of HBN, of the, this uh, 2D uh, insulating material. And so uh, the, the property are similar to those um, uh, found in with the usual magnetic tunnel junction. That is, when you sweep the field, if the, it occurs in the system, the reversal as a function of the field of the magnetization is not as the same field for the bottom and top layer. And so you can see in the range between the reversal of one of the electrode and the reversal of the other, there is an increase of the magnetoresistance, the TMR effects, as you can see here, and corresponding to the crossover between uh, parallel magnetization, anti-parallel magnetization of the two layers of FGT, and again, at higher field, parallel magnetization. So it's not uh, really surprising. The, the difference, uh, if one look at the difference with uh, respect to the 3D uh, materials with the TMR with 3D materials, is that in, in 3D materials, finally, the models are relatively simple. In first approximation, one can say that the TMR depends on the, um, on the spin polarization of the density of state in the electrodes. Huh? Uh, and the interfacial effects are not so important. But in fact, in 2D materials, the interfacial property becomes 
uh, essential. And so, uh, in fact, spin tunneling with uh, 2D uh, magnets is sometimes called spin filtering because uh, what is important is what occurs at the interface. It is the interfacial hybridization of the wave functions in the uh, tunnel barrier and in the electrodes. And so uh, a lot of work has been devoted to this property to explain what are exactly the interfacial hybridizations playing a role in the size of the TMR. Uh, so, in fact, the uh, influence of electric field. The, in fact, in the sort of tunnel junctions, you can also obtain the TMR not by applying a field and changing the relative, but applying a voltage between the top and bottom electrode. Uh, so, the, the best example I have found, I have not found very clear example of this effect, but uh, is in a theoretical paper based on a uh, quantum transport uh, modeling of the transport property. So for this system with a layer of CRS3, a bilayer with anti-ferromagnetic uh, interaction. So, uh, okay. Okay, maybe I lost something, okay, no. Okay, thank you. And, and so between uh, the electrodes are graphene, and below there is a layer of HBN. And in fact, as a function, what has been found from this theoretical calculation is that by applying a voltage, and uh, it's possible to reverse the um, magnetic configuration from anti-parallel to parallel is what is occurring here. By applying a voltage between the two electrodes, the system reverse is becomes ferromagnetic instead of okay, instead of anti-ferromagnetic, and at the same time you can see the current increase, the conductance uh, increase a lot. So it's a sort of uh, magnetoresistance induced but this time not by a magnetic field but by electric voltage between the electrodes, which is of course applying an electric voltage is more convenient than applying a field with a magnet and with a electron magnet, for example. So this is very interesting to having the possibility of TMR with only uh, electric field manipulation by electric field. This is, for example, the TMR that is obtained as a function of the voltage applied between the electrodes according to this calculation with a very large magnetoresistance above 400%. Uh, so, uh, so uh, con going on with uh, this uh, sort of uh, spintronic properties, switching by current and spin orbit torques. So I say already that the spin-orbit effects are large in this compound because spin orbit is a condition to for escaping from the merming wagner uh, theorem. So for example, a typical example of switching of a uh, FGT, of this 2D magnet FGT, by the spin orbit uh, current, the spin current uh, generated by spinal effect in this layer of platinum. So you can see the spinal effect in platinum is uh, correspond to the deflection of the spin up and spin down, uh, green and red spin in opposite direction, so that the red spin are uh, emitted uh, downward, and so the green spins are attracted upward, and so this uh, corresponds to injection, what is called injection of a pure spin current. What is this my symbol for a spin current? electrons with opposite spin going in opposite direction into CFGT. And so you know that injecting a spin current into a, a magnetic uh, layer induce a, a torque, what is called a spin orbit torque, and uh, is used also in three dimension to reverse the magnetization of magnetic layer. And this is an example of AGT with the spin all effect induced in, by the current in uh, platinum. Uh, so the current is going this way, the spin current is, uh, is uh, vertical, and as a function of the current, you can see the switching 
from uh, one orientation of FLGT upward to downward and to the change detected by the anomalous Hall effect. Of course, uh, what is known also for the 3D materials is that, in fact, the switching by the spin Hall effect, by the spin omit force, is possible only if also to break the symmetry, to apply, this is a field generated by the spin orbit torque, so the damping light torque for this uh, field, but the reversal is only possible if at the same time one apply a small field along the direction of the current, this H0. And in this experiment, for example, you can see the, the amplitude of this field obtained for generate this um, experimental curve, three, six of nine kilohertz. This is relatively small, but it's not uh, different from what is observed generally not always, because I am working a lot now on um, 3D materials on uh, field-free switching of uh, magnetic layers. But, uh, the, the, okay, so now what sort of application can be uh, uh, derived from this uh, spin orbit effects in uh, 3D materials? First, the classical, with 3D materials, the classical application is what is called the SOT RAM, spin orbit torque RAM. Uh, so this is a usual schematic picture of a SOT RAM, that is a magnetic tunnel junctions the, uh, with two magnetic layers on both sides of uh, MGO. And so the two states of the memory correspond to the parallel orientation of the magnet or anti-parallel um, orientation of the magnetization in the two magnetic layer, uh, magnetic electrodes. And in a SOT RAM, uh, the switching of this, uh, and so the switching of the, um, of the state of the memory is obtained by uh, a current in the tantalum layer by using the spin on effect in the tantalum layer to inject vertically a spin current into this layer, this bottom layer, iron cobalt borum, and to reverse this magnetization. So you can see an example of experimental results of uh, for the, this uh, type of uh, structure, uh, where injecting a current, you can reverse the magnetization of the bottom layer here, the, from um, down to up, and then by reversing the field, you can reverse in the opposite direction. Of course, as I have said before, this obtained in general by applying also an additional in-plane field along the direction of the cone, the x direction of the cone. So this um, this a typical example of result with a 3D magnets, eh? iron cobalt bohm, and the same sort of experiments can be performed with uh, 2D magnets, for example, FGT. In these experiments, again, uh, a platinum layer is deposited on FGT, and by applying a, a current in the platinum layer and, and, using, and using the, exploiting the spin all effect to inject a spin current into the FGT, one can obtain similar uh, cycles that is switching from down to up and then by reversing the current from up to down. And again, it's, it's necessary to apply also a small, um, a small uh, in-plane field uh, to break the symmetry and allow the reversal of the magnetization. So the, this is another example, interesting example. Again, this is the, the, the spinal material is uh, tantalum and uh, the 2D magnet is another compound which is called SCGT. And what is interesting is to compare to see if there is some advantage with, with the 2D materials. And they can be summarized in this uh, uh, diagram here. Of course, uh, the merit factor are a small HX, a small field to allow the switching and also a small current density. So the desired uh, direction is this direction and to have at the same time a small current density and a small field. And this um, diagram compare what is obtained uh, with the 3D and 2D magnets. And you can see the best results are obtained for a, a 2D magnets, CGT. Huh? 
uh, with uh, us a relatively small uh, field HX and a very small current density. Of course, uh, so these materials are, seems to be interesting for application, provide, of course, that the ordering temperature can be enhanced above room temperature, what is not the case so far. But in fact, in the future, if these materials can uh, have a curie temperature well above room temperature, it will be possible. Uh, so, um, okay, I suppose. Mm, okay, so uh, okay, so I realize that I confused uh, in a preceding slides on. Um, okay, so in these slides, in fact, if uh, um, because uh, spin orbit coupling is important in the two D materials, it should be possible. Uh, it should be possible to uh, to use a spin orbit effect in the 2D materials also, and especially at the interface, because the most interesting thing is at the interface. And in fact, this is an interesting result, a theoretical result uh, showing how the spin orbit coupling at the interface of 2D material can be exploited. And this is, for example, uh, at the interface, this is a, a theoretical work based on a first principle quantum transport approach by a group which is expert of this type of uh, modeling of the transport object test. And so this is, uh, this system. in fact, what I want to say is that now what can be the exploitation of the spin orbit in a 2D magnet? In fact, at the interface of a 2D magnet, uh, or at the interface of um, NM, there are uh, the possibility of exploiting the 2D electron gas at the interface between the two materials. For example, this 2D magnet is something else, or between two, D, the two, two type of 2D magnets. And so uh, what are the spin orbit effects that can be expected at an interface in the two-dimensional interfacial gas is what is called the Edelstein effect. In fact, in a 2D electron gas at the interface, in a rash band electron gas, or uh, typically, or another type of 2D electron gas, uh, the electron effect is that when a current is flowing in a 2D electron gas, uh, it uh, polarizes the spin in the 2D electron gas, for example, in a rash by electron gas, and uh, this is Edelstein polarization. And uh, this uh, polarization of the 2D electron gas also emit, can emit on the material on the other side of the interface, a spin currents like the emission by spinal effect. But now the emission is not by the spinal effect, but the Edelstein effect in a two-dimensional electron gas. And so in 2D magnets, it's clear that the uh, spin orbit effect that can be exploited is this uh, interfacial effects rather than the spinal effect with a 3D, typically a 3D uh, mechanism. And so uh, a, an example is given by this theoretical paper on, uh, on this um, bar layer. So a CR i 3 layer with anti-ferromagnetic coupling, a bar layer with anti-ferromagnetic coupling between the two layers. This layer is deposited in this theoretical paper on a TMD, in the uh, 2D TMD tantalum SC2. And so at the interface, what is described in this paper is that the interface, there is a 2D electron gas which has some hash bar propagate. So a strong spin orbit coupling gives rise right to a hash bar uh, interaction in the two dimensional electron gas. And uh, the emission by the electron effects in this uh, theoretical description induce and by inducing a spin current into the first layer of CR I3, is uh, able to reverse the magnetization of this layer. And so, uh, finally, uh, by uh, simply by uh, by uh, inducing a current 
in a, in the interface between these two materials we are poorly conducting cri3 is not conducting uh, this tmd is poorly conducting but the interface is conducting there is a 2d electron gas conducting and simply by a current in this 2d electron gas is possible to reverse the magnetization of the bottom layer in the cri3 and to uh, change the um, and, and and then by looking at the um, at the tmr between um, the tmr between uh, two electrodes the the change of resistance is very important for example you can see here that uh, as a function of the um, going from uh, by going from anti-ferromagnetic to ferromagnetic reduce the resistance by a lot so this is an example of what can be done in the spirit of the SOT RAM uh, by exploiting not the spin orbital effect in a 3D materials, but simply the spin orbit coupling in a, and the elation effect in a 2D electron gas. Okay, so uh, in fact, there are, I did not find a, a lot of clear experimental results except this theoretical paper on this problem of the exploitation of the 2D electron gas on the spin orbit coupling and elation effect in 2D electron gas. The only one I can could find is this one. So the, um, uh, the use of these 2D magnets here based on nickel PS3. Uh, and this is a insulating layer. On the top, there is a permalloy layer. And so a current in at the interface what is supposed to an interpretation of this result is that the current in these two electron, uh, two electron gas at the interface uh, generated by elation effect a spin current in two permalloy that can exert a torque on the magnetization of permalloy. You can see, for example, some measurements of the torque measured by second harmonic measurements. You can see the torque uh, uh, exerts on the magnetization of uh, permalloy is this one, and so of course is very important. Compare with the torque exerts uh, use where you replace this 2D magnet by uh, by a 3D uh, by a platinum. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see this correspond to uh, platinum. The what you replace the 2D magnets by platinum. This correspond to the green dots here. You can see that at low temperature, of course, the effect obtained with these 2D magnets and with the 2D electron gas at the interface of this insulating 2D magnets, is, the performance is better than for only uh, platinum. Hmm. Of course, as a function of temperature, this effect disappears rapidly because the order in temperature of these two D magnet is relatively small, and at room temperature, platinum is better, of course. So, finally, to summarize, uh, we have seen that uh, the spin orbit coupling uh, of this, uh, which is always large in these two D magnets, can be exploited uh, to obtain uh, spin currents to generate the sp spin orbit currents, and for example, to uh, uh, be used in a device like uh, esoterams, for example. Of course, uh, the condition is uh, to, to solve the bottleneck of the low temperature of these two D magnets. So I uh, come back now, I uh, will uh, proceed with uh, skirmium in two D magnets. This is more or less my field of research. And so to begin with general comments, what are the possible advantages of 2D magnets for a skirmion based device? In fact, uh, I work a lot with, in, my group with, uh, in my group at the laboratory on uh, uh, skirmions in 3D uh, materials like uh, cobalt and others. And uh, in fact, in fact the, the advance had been very fast during the last years, during the last five years. And what uh, can be, one, one know how to stabilize um, skirmions in a thin layer of cobalt, for example, uh, in multi layers, for example, cobalt platinum prepared by sputtering. One knows how to generate skirmion by current pulses. 
uh, what one knows also how to detect the skirmions either by MFA, MFM images or simply by uh, anomalous all effect by electrical measurements. And one knows also how to, uh, one know a lot about the current induced motion of skirmions. Large velocity, larger than 100 meters per second can be obtained by pushing the current by the, the spin orbit torques. And, but one of the difficulties is uh, that uh, in uh, these uh, 3D layers prepared in general by sputtering, there is a lot of defects. And so the skirmions are pinned by defects and slow down. And the, the, the current and use motion is never very uniform. So one of the possibilities with 3D material, with 2D materials, with this uh, very pure layer of uh, FGT, for example, of other 2D magnets, to, uh, to escape from the problem of the pinning by defects and to obtain uh, more uniform velocity of all the skirmion in the same layer. And this is a difficulty for, for example, some application one needs to move skirmion with the same velocity and to avoid pinning of some of them by defects. And uh, also what uh, is one of the difficulty with uh, usual skirmions is the, what is called the uh, skirmion all effect. That is the motion is not in the direction of the current, but uh, is uh, somewhat oblique with respect to the direction of the current. And so this is something that must be solved. And some, for example, one of the attempts to solve this problem of the deflection of the skirmions is uh, to work with antiferromagnetic skirmions synthetic anti skirmion that is to couple two magnetic layers and two skirmion in two different layers by an anti coupling. And then uh, the, the skirmion, the motion of the skirmion become longitudinal. And we see that uh, the, also the 2D magnets sub maybe allows to solve these type of problems. So first, uh, Another interesting property of uh, the 2D magnets and that in general in uh, uh, multi-layer with skirmions, one needs some inversion symmetry to induce the DMI. The skirmions are induced by the DMI at the interface. And the interface is uh, to induce some breaking symmetry and to uh, uh, and to uh, um, generate dialotion schema interaction with at the base of the creation of skirmions. And so this uh, breaking of immersion symmetry can be intrinsic in some 2D magnets. For example, we work with uh, uh, some co-workers in Grenoble and China on uh, the theory of uh, this uh, uh, TMD, transition metal dichalcogenide MNSTTA. And so uh, intrinsically, the breaking symmetry does not exist in the structure of these uh, uh, 2D magnets. And so you can reproduce intrinsically what is uh, produced externally by uh, adding uh, two layers of different materials in uh, classical skirmions. And so the calculation performed on this Janus TMD is called Janus TMD because it has, uh, is, has this asymmetry. And so the, the DFT calculation showed that there are, there are uh, DFT, there are DMI in this system that there is a DMI the, uh, between the spins of the manganese here the magnetic element is the manganese, and the, these manganese are coupled by DMI, dilation schemoria interactions. And you can see that the DMI magnitude can be as large or larger than uh, what is obtained usually with the layer of 3D magnets, cobalt, for example. And uh, also uh, going on with uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation using the parameter exchange Galoshin um, schema interaction found for these uh, uh, monolayers of TMD, one finds that the ground states at some field at least uh, in. Uh, um, as uh, 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 chiral structure, skirmions. This is a type of skirmion, relatively small skirmion that can be predicted in this 
uh, DMD. So this is the principle, or some principle use uh, find uh, 2D materials with this intrinsic breaking of symmetry. It's not the only the one to have automatically the Gaussian schema interaction and schemes. In fact, it can be done also in the usual way by introducing interface like with 3D material, cobalt platinum, for example. And this corresponds to the next uh, result that I show. First, this uh, very beautiful result have been obtained at UCLA by uh, inducing the Gaussian schema interaction by depositing FGT on uh, uh, by, by depositing uh, this uh, TMD, um, transition metal dihydrogenide, uh, on FGT. This is FGT uh, and this is uh, uh, TMD. And so this introduce, of course, an interface and a breaking of the inversion symmetry, like in this picture, huh? uh, is uh, where, in fact, now the um, the breaking symmetry is at the interface, and this is the result they found. Um, nail schemes induced by the Gaussian schema interaction. This is a typical image of Lorentz microscopy, tilted Lorentz microscopy, with a classical image of schemes uh, corresponding to this uh, double moon, white and black moon, in you know, this way. So, okay, so also in 2D magnets, scanning can be obtained uh, by introducing, breaking the inversion symmetry and introducing interfacial DMI, the interaction. In fact, this is, we, what uh, has been obtained in this publication, a collaboration uh, we had with uh, some group in uh, Korea, Japan, and USA, is again uh, with FGT, FGT without oxide, there is no uh, FGT as uh, the inversion symmetry. So you cannot expect uh, dilution schema interaction in pure FGT. And is what is observed, what we observe is that without uh, oxidation, only FGT, we have only block schemions. That is with a, um, a texture of the magnetization with the magnetization turning around is the contrary what is obtained with um, uh, nail schemions. And on the contrary, with uh, oxidation of the surface, some schemium appears. Nail schemions with the same type of image that on the other side here. So in fact, the, uh, the, the interesting discovery is that simply the inversion symmetry can be broken by uh, oxidation of one of the interface. So, uh, so this result is interesting and even more interesting if one look to what can be done for the current induced motion of skin. So in a track of FGT, uh, by uh, by um, uh, with current pulse, one sees that uh, this camion, for example, moves upward from this position after one pulse to this position to this position. And so this is another for the green one. And uh, the interesting result is that uh, relatively good velocity can be obtained as in 3D materials, but also the, uh, the motion is, uh, more or less uniform. There is no strong difference, as strong difference as in 3D materials between the velocity of these two schemes and can be checked for uh, other schemes too. And surprisingly also, uh, we can see that uh, the motion is vertical, the current is vertical, the motion is vertical, and this schemion, for example, always remains at same distance of the edge here. Yeah? more or less here, the same distance. And so there is, it seems that the, uh, surprisingly, the motion is relatively longitudinal. So this is first results that are not well understood so far, but are promising because they show that skirmon can be uh, produced in 2D, in FGT, in 2D materials. So uh, apparently on this example, uniform motion, almost longitudinal motion, of course, all the problems are not solved. For example, there is several pending questions in this uh, system also, as well as the FGT experiments uh, at UCLA. 
uh, is difficult to understand because these um, FGT are not single layer. They have something like 30 or 40 uh, layers of FGT. And so it's difficult to understand how a skirmons EMG can be induced by the ocean schema interaction by interfacial effects at a single interface with a transition metal dijaclogenide at UCLA or by oxidation in our work uh, of at a stop interface. So it is not, uh, this problem has to be solved. Uh, so uh, for example, the problem is the problem of the exactly what is the vertical profile of the pink texture in thick FGT. So my idea is that certainly is, uh, there is a nail skirmon at the top, close to the interface, and then a, a progressive transition to block skirmons. And the tax profile is not well known, and the work is in progress to really uh, determine what is the vertical um, profile of these skirmons, because the uh, Lorentz microscopy see mainly what is on the top and uh, ignore the fastons with tech -tech, um, Telton uh, beam of electrons, it's possible, not possible to see the block skirmions. So there is some uh, pending problem to solve. And uh, what is the mechanism, the motion mechanism? Because in this system, there is no like for in 3D, in multi-layer of 3D materials, the mechanism of the motion is the spinal effect induced by platinum, for example. And so exactly the mechanism of this motion is not clearly understood. And this is also a pending question to solve. Of course, if one want anyhow to be speculative and to, to be, uh, what is the possibility, for example, in anti experiment, since we have seen that with 2D magnets, there is some possibility, for example, for CR3 of anti coupling between two uh, layers of CR3. And so, for example, for 3D materials, what is uh, being obtained is, uh, in my laboratory in particular, good results with uh, anti skirmion, that is, skirmion couple anti and so uh, that are not subjected to the deflection in the, their current and this motion. So, for example, a speculative idea that has been maybe to try is to, to do the same thing, but with a CRS rebel layer by taking into account, taking advantage of the anti magnetic coupling between the two layers, the two single layer. And uh, going on with uh, some speculative idea, uh, in fact, so I call speculative what is uh, theoretical and not yet uh, experimental proof. And so is a recent work that is, um, we, we collaborate to, to the them, but it's mainly the work of uh, uh, Ong Xin Yan group in Ningbo in China, uh, who is a very good theoretician. And, uh, and mainly the results that we present are mainly from this paper, even though some results are in the two other papers. So it's uh, uh, some theoretical predictions of the multi propagate and intrinsic DMR in these 2D magnets, chromium nitrogen. And so this is the structure. This is an hexagonal structure like a graphene, except that there is some buckling of the structure that is the, um, the, the nitrogen can be below the plane of the chromium or above. And of course, this what can be shown in several theoretical papers is that this gives rise to a ferroelectric polarization. Mm -hmm. And, and so with the polariz ferroelectric polarization up or down for these two structures and the possibility of going from one to the other by applying a vertical electric field, a gate voltage. And so uh, this, uh, there are other examples of this time of um, switching between uh, two uh, ferroelectric polarization of 2D magnets. And of course, um, uh, these uh, two uh, structures have uh, uh, an inversion, uh, no inversion symmetry and opposite electric field in the two. So what can be expected and opposite Rashba 
uh, interaction in these two structures and opposite DMI also in these two structures. And so the DFT calculation has been performed to first check that really there is a hash bar interaction and hash bar interaction depending on the direction of the electric polarization. For example, typical dispersion hash bar um, curve, hash bar, typical hash bar dispersion curves with uh, depending on the polarization, P down or P up, this uh, shift of the uh, parabola uh, depending on the direction of the ferroelectric polarization. And so this is uh, this system have certainly they are metallic and certainly they, they can be used the, what can be exploited certainly is the hash bar effect and the possibility of changing the polarization, the hash bar constant, the sign of the hash bar constant by switching with an electric field, with a gate electrode um, uh, between these two configurations. And also because generally the hash bar effect goes with the Dalashinsky moria interactions and there is some relation, simple relation between the hash bar constant and, um, polar and DMR. And, and so, of course, this had been uh, verified by the DFT calculation, uh, starting from this uh, ferroelectric polarization and applying an electric voltage, a gate voltage, one uh, switch the system to the um, up uh, electric polarization, and at the same time, one goes from a dilution scheme or interactions uh, of different quality. This one corresponds to a Clock, um, uh, clockwise uh, rotation and counterclockwise in this direction. So there is a possibility of having in this sort of system due to the breaking of inversion symmetry, duration scheme or interaction and schermions and the simulation confirms that the size of this DMI allows to produce a schermion, low schermion in this. Uh, and of course, the advantage is that depending on the polarization, it will be possible in this system to produce a schermion of different chirality. That is, uh, and uh, this, of course, is correspond to this scheme depending on the polarization of the electrical po um, electric polarization. We can have schermions uh, with uh, um, different chirality. Huh? Yeah, correspond with uh, rotation in different direction. And also, if you also uh, manipulate the polarization, you can have four states with diff two different polarity, polarities and two different polarization at the center of the schermions. And so this uh, opens some way, interesting way for uh, the application of schermions. It has been already uh, evoked in several projects of a device. And for example, this device, this uh, logic gate has been proposed to use uh, schermions of different quality and Based on the, 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 the mechanism of the gate, is to exact uh, merge, to merging of schermions or uh, annihilating schermions of different quality. And so, this, so what is a if one to be speculative again, there is certainly with this type of schermions to have uh, um, tracks with uh, different type of schermions of different qualities. And for example, the possibility, uh, for, for example, of uh, annihil annihilation of schermions by collision between schermions of these two types. What is, uh, if I want to finish with a, a animation, this animation, you can see that uh, there is different polarization in the two sides. So this one is stopped and one another one is uh, sent with a different quality. This one will be stopped at the border with a uh, with other type of uh, track and it will be annihilated by this one. So there is a sort of thing that we can speculate with uh, this uh, 2D magnets. Huh? Uh, and um, this is also the end of my talk. So I want at the end to thanks uh, to, to my colleagues, all my colleagues and co-workers in my laboratory in uh, Unité Mix de Physique Sénéré Salès at the University of Paris-Saclay. Uh, I have always a great pleasure to work with them and also to my co-worker for this work on uh, skirmions in 2D magnets. 
mais elle est une Grenoble, Meyer Chef, which is a very good theoretician. Uh, I have also some collaboration in this field at the Nanogoon in the Sebastian, Felix Casanova at Beang in Beijing, uh, Beang University in Beijing Zhao, and uh, in China in Ningbo uh, with um, Ong Xing Yan and his uh, co worker. And so at the end, I have to thank you for your attentions. And I am, if you want, uh, ready for answering your questions. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Albert, for this very, very interesting lecture over uh, summarizing uh, the recent developments of the 2D magnets. Uh, on top of uh, almost 500 participants, so about 300 here and about 200 in the YouTube. So, and on behalf of my team and on behalf of our colleagues from NICER and participants, I clap for your excellent lecture. Thank you so much. So we have, we can, yes, thank you. Uh, we can take few questions. Uh, so already uh, there are a few and others, if you have a question, you can raise your hands. Uh, I can go there. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are asking uh, how electric field is enhancing the uh, Curie temperature. Uh, so, uh, electric field, the, the, the electronic property, in fact, the magnetic property are related to the electronic structure, of course. And, and so, uh, the, the exact mechanism is not known, but when the principle is known, that is, the electric field changes, uh, shifts the bands, change electronic property, the, the electronic bands, the electronic structure, and so uh, this, there is an effect on the magnetic property that is not well known at the moment. Even the proximity effect with the topological assembly is not well understood. There is a lot of work theoretically to understand these effects. Okay, thank you. So that is actually the second question was exactly like that. When you put a GT next to the topological insulator of bismuth telluride, why? Hmm. But you have already told it, uh, thank you. Uh, then, uh, uh, Somebody is asking um, in the, uh, could you please explain in uh, manganese uh, telluride PMD, what is the need of Monte Carlo simulations? Uh, the need of Monte Carlo simulation is to, to start from a system where we know the exchange, the dilution scheme or interaction, and to find what is the, the ground state uh, texture, the, the texture of the ground state. And so you start from a completely disordered system of spin, and by uh, simulating uh, progressively uh, the forces on the spin, you see what is the ground state when you decrease, uh, um, you start from a high temperature from a completely disordered spin system to find the ground state. What is the ground state? Okay. Uh, then there is another question, why there will be no pinning of skirmions by defects in 2D magnets? Uh, because generally in 2D magnets, uh, in fact, uh, because generally these 2D magnets are generally uh, without defects. You know that graph graphene, for example, can be obtained with very few defects and is a good conductivity comes from this uh, absence of defects. And so if you have, for example, exfoliated films uh, these films are generally uh, with very few defects, these two the, and so they can be prepared by MBE and they have also few defects. Prepared by CVD is not the same. Prepared by CVD, these two D magnets have some proportion no defects. But in general, the, uh, the difficulty with 3D magnets that you need to have a dilution scheme or interaction, you need to have multi-layers and this multi -layer can, the easier way to prepare them is sputtering and what is adopted by many, all the people. And I never seen some good results with MB. And so it seems that uh, um, it will be possible to have less defect in 2D magnets. Okay. Of course, uh, if you have also very uh, uh, a very small concentration in defect in in two D in three D magnet, it will work also. But at the moment, so far, it has been really achieved. Okay, uh, I have a question. In one of your slides, uh, you showed this Carmion movement in FGT. So mm -hmm. that those results are at low temperature or at room temperature? Uh, Carmion in FGT. No, yeah. they are at low temperature. 
Yes. Okay. Then it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, there are more questions, uh, but probably uh, maybe we can take it later. So I request everyone, if possible, to switch on your camera, and we can take a like a screenshot of the uh, participants. Uh, so I request everyone to uh, switch on your camera. So uh, Albert, what your camera you? is already on. Yeah, my uh, mine is come all day on. My, yes, my... I'm I'm requesting others. Uh, yeah. If they can switch on the camera. Um, okay. So I just take one screenshot. And uh, there are actually many. So I, I see many people. I have to take few screenshots. <laughs> Just please stay tuned and taking the screenshots. Uh, please bear with me. There are several windows, several, like, like 200 people. So I request everyone to mute their microphone. Okay, uh, may I request everyone to switch up their microphone? Uh, do you know how to get everyone in one screen? It's not possible. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, because I, I, I took screenshots, but I forgot to uh, put on the... Uh, I, I forgot to paste this, so I'm sorry. You have to just bear may, with me. May I, may, uh, may I uh, help you, sir? Uh, yeah. You can make in one screen, sir. Everyone. Yeah. Okay, it's please the same do screen. that. Do that. Um... Okay. I can stop also sharing my screen. No. Uh. <laughs> It's very difficult. Okay, I mean, okay. Uh, if some uh, participants can do that, please do. Uh, I mean, for me, it's very difficult. But I like to present a uh, small uh, pre uh, present uh, from our nicer. So uh, just uh, yeah. So I will, uh, Albert. I request you to stop sharing. And yeah, I, will I stop share sharing. Screen. Okay. Okay. So now thank I you. have you on the screen. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, oh man, this is, um, okay. So here we go. So can you um, have to go full screen? That is not in full screen. You have to go full screen. <laughs> full screen for you, for who? Uh, yes, I'm just trying with another app. Uh, okay, this one. So I see yes. the screen of uh, I don't know whom. Full screen. Yes. Okay. So now, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. I see your screen. Okay. You show okay, something you. on. Uh, hmm. Yes. So I just read it. Uh, so WTS seminar webinar series on Spintronics. National Institute of Science, Education and Research, NYSER, Bhubaneswar, India. Takes pleasure in presenting this plaque to Professor Albert Ford from Thales University of Paris, Sackler, in recognition and appreciation for being a valuable speaker to give a lecture on 2D magnets from fundamental to spintronic devices. So again, many, many, many thanks to you for your excellent okay. lecture. And also many thanks to all the participants today and my colleagues at NYSER who have helped and participated in this event to make a big success. I look forward to your active participation from next week onwards.